This week on The Wire, you should be paying under 4%. Low rates are here to stay and property markets set for a rebound. G'day guys, welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate where you can get all the top stories hammering from the week in finance, real estate and investment for Friday the 2nd of August. Now before we kick it off, let me introduce myself guys. My name is Tim Guest, I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the managing director of Infinite Wealth. I've trained over 18,000 people how to reach their financial goals, whether they be things like home ownership, travel and lifestyle, all over retirement, we do it using only what people currently have available to them right now, and we do it with very high customer satisfaction ratings. Now, whether this is your first time tuning in or you're a long time follower, thanks for joining us. We love to see you guys here. In fact, you are the reason why we do this and you make all of this possible. Now, the only thing that I ask, I'd just really love to see you guys interact with these posts. So please like, love, angry, comment, question, uh, and of course, share this video with your friends and family via your social media channels so that they can get the benefit of this valuable information as well. But let's it, let's get, kick it off, let's get into the top story happening this week. So you should be paying for under 4%. Uh, so home loan customers across Australia should be paying an interest rate of under 4% or they're paying too much. And this is according to one specialist. Some lenders are even offering a variable rate mortgage deals with a two in front. I've seen 2.89, I've seen a couple of 2.99s. There are some incredible deals available out there at the moment. Now, financial comparison website Mozo's analysis of the mortgage market showed the gap between principal and interest loans uh, for owner occupiers and investors is 0.42 percentage points. Okay, the average owner occupier rate is now 3.99 compared to 4.41 for investors. So significant differences in the type of rates that you get depending on the kind of loan that you're after. Now the site spokesman, uh, uh, Kirsty Lamont, says borrowers needs to be proactive and demand a better rate from their bank, otherwise they should, they should switch. The new magic number home loan is 3.5%. If you're paying anything above that, you're paying way too much. It's time to compare some of the lower rates on the market because you can get variable rates now below 3% and there's some big savings on offers. The major banks continue to reduce mortgage fixed rates with the Commonwealth Bank, ANZ and Westpac are all currently offering owner occupiers paying principal and interest three year fixed rates of 3.28% while the NAB is offering 3.29%. So some fantastic deals out there. Like I said, you know, if, you're, if your home loan isn't under three, uh, you should be reaching out to us. And if your investment property isn't under four, you should be reaching out to us, speaking to our team, see what deals we can get organised for you. But that covers off the top story. Let's move on to our next story. Low rates are here to stay. So the Reserve Bank has indicated it is open to cutting official rate interest rates even further while committing itself to keeping them at ultra low levels for an extended period. So Governor Philip Lowe says that uh, although the economy's fundamentals remain strong, the RBA is prepared to produce faster growth by taking the official cash rate below 1%. Lowe says the recent back-to-back -back cuts in interest rates, a reduction in, high, in tax rates for low and middle income earners, higher commodity prices and stabilisation in the big city housing markets will all support the economy. But if they fail to generate enough ac activity, the bank is willing to take rates lower. So ma markets currently put the chance of a rate cut at the RBA's August 6th meeting at just 20%, but they expect the cash rate to be due... Uh, uh, but to be reduced to 0.75% by its November meeting. They also put a chance of uh, the cash rate reaching 0.5% at 50-50 by the middle of next year. Westpac says the official rate will go to 0.5% by early next year and West... Westpac Chief Economist Bill Evans says the RBA will struggle to meet its targets on the jobless rate and wages growth without the further easing in monetary policy. Personally, I think they're about as low as they're going to go. I mean, we've seen half a percent in interest rate cuts, but the other major changes that we've seen is the coalition election victory. Uh, we've also seen, well, the interest rate cuts that we're talking about, plus the, the changes to how banks now have to assess uh, customers. That's more beneficial for customers, customers being able to borrow 10 to 20%. I think that in itself is going to be enough to stimulate the economy and get it to the jobless rate and the inflation uh, that, we're, that the RBA is aiming for. So that's it for me. Uh, let's move on to our third story for the week. So property market set for a rebound. Okay, Commonwealth Bank, the nation's largest property lender, sends, says there's clear signs that pre big city property markets have bottomed and are set for a rebound. Property prices are expected to be climbing back in a positive territory in the second half of the year and should generate positive returns in 2020. Interest rate reductions, tax cuts, easier borrowing, rising population and improved sentiment are combining to boost market activity and offer early evidence of sustained improvement. The federal election result has removed fears of tax changes to negative gearing and capital gains tax. 
uh, and home buying intentions have been negative since about 2018, but current readings suggest the market is finally turning. By the way, that comes from CBA our Chief Economist uh, Michael Blythe. The next big question with interest rate cuts in place and tax cuts coming is whether policymakers have done enough. CBA research predicts higher lending growth to property investors that will support dwelling prices, particularly as rental yields are higher than term deposit rates, which are sliding towards zero as cash rates cut. So some great news for the markets there. There. Great news for finance with the interest rates dropping. Certainly a good time for people to start reassessing their plans and looking forward for our next growth cycle here in Australia. But guys, that pretty much covers off all the top stories uh, happening from the week in real estate, finance and investment. Before I go though, a couple of things uh, just to remember. Firstly, I'll be coming at you on um, a Tuesday with our next Just Ask Tim video series. So if there's any questions or if there's any topics that you want me to talk more about, uh, please comment below or please reach out to one of our social media cha uh, channels at Infinite Wealth AU or at Tim Guest AU uh, so we can include you in that and I could be answering your question live. Keep in mind, if I don't answer it live, uh, one of our team will get back to you. We'll always make sure you guys get the information that you need. Also, don't forget to engage in the video. Like, love, angry, comment, question. Tell us what you think. Tell us how you feel. We love to see your interaction and please share this post with your friends and family. It helps us build a bigger audience and, of course, helps your friends and family get the benefit of this valuable information as well. Guys, that's it from me. One last thing before I go. Remember, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail and 78% of Australians have no long-term financial plan. So you want to get ahead of the, um, the, the curve and get a plan in place. Guys, I'll be talking to you soon. Have a great week. Thanks a lot.